You got to see this story mm. tonight. A couple is sharing their experience of living in a Hillsborough house they say is haunted. I could not do this. CBS 17's Bridget Chapman spoke to the Maxwells about their time in the house and dug into the dark history of that property. By day, this historic colonial home awes the many people who drive through Hillsborough. This is beautiful, like Greek revival looking thing. And we're like, wow, how dreamy. And like, it's right by the river. Yeah. It just seemed really ideal. Brooke and Tom Maxwell were searching for a new home in 2014 when the property caught their eye. The walkthrough was anything but ordinary. And they had like grandparents in the dining room, like set up in like a makeshift bedroom. and. So many children, and they were moving, and so it was like a lot of kids following us up and very, down the stairs. Very, very high energy. That's my room. Captivated by the low rent and quizzical vibe, they signed a lease. The Maxwells moved into the historic home known as Poplar Hill, which was once owned by Julian Carr. Julian Carr was a nasty piece of work. Carr was a tobacco and textile manufacturer and a white supremacist. He purchased the home with his wife Nanny in 1891. I don't think that there was any stopping whatever was going to happen from happening. It would take us hours to share all of the experiences the Maxwells had there. Here's just a handful. And I heard a car pull up. I heard wheels on the gravel driveway and I heard the door open, the squeaky mudroom door. So I knew that she was home and I went downstairs to greet her and no one was there. The car wasn't there and the door was closed and locked. And I would see this figure come out of the chimney, the firebox, and crawl across the floor and then appear next to me in bed. So I'm facing the house. Behind me is the circular driveway that goes around the house. And I look over to my right and moving like a like a spinning top is a cylindrical shadow tapered at both ends. This bottle went flying off of the shelf and it like broke all over the floor and and she and I just we both saw it happen. It wasn't like, oh, it fell down. It like shot across the room. The Maxwells aren't alone. They say relatives who visited also felt or saw something. Like that's why it was it was validating because shared experience, obviously, like you can corroborate what just happened and it makes you feel less crazy. The Maxwells say they didn't really talk about what they were seeing or feeling during their time at the house. With the frequency in which it happened, it would just be annoying at some point to keep saying, did you see that? Did you see that? They say whatever was on the property was becoming more brazen, and the landlord let them out of the lease a little early. When we left the house, it was just literally shut the door and never go back. We didn't know any of the history no. of this house when just we lived there. So now that we know about it, it's easy to go back and try to make narrative sense. sense. I went to the library in Hillsboro to see what I could learn. A man named James Hogg built the house in 1794. The Hogg family name later changed to Alves. Records show during the time the property was in that family, 12-year-old Mary Alves was shot and killed at the home by a family friend. It was deemed a tragic accident. What many people connected to this house all have in common is they're buried right here at the Hillsboro Old Town Cemetery. Records show it was moved to where it is now in 1980 by a man named James Freeland. And years later, researchers found in excavated graves on the property. The Okanichi tribe also once owned the land. Neighbors tell me only one other family has lived in the house since the Maxwells moved out. They were only there for half a year. The house is now empty. I think I would make it a museum. I think that if you could turn it into some sort of beneficial, some sort of like G generator for money for a town like Hillsborough. Saying perhaps the acknowledgement of the history and its energetic signature would make the madness stop. There's a whole Just hidden there. history here that's not being told. The Maxwell say they'll never go back. People get upset like when you share mm -hmm. stories like this. Yeah. And I've had people contact me and say, oh, that didn't happen. Have you ever considered this? Have you considered the possibility of this? And I'm like, I've considered everything. Saying they're not here to try to convince anyone, but simply share their story. The experience is that Brooke had or that I had, I don't expect anyone to believe it. And, and it doesn't matter. I know what happened to me. In Hillsboro, Rich Chapman, CBS 17 News. Okay, I totally believe them. I do too. I, I have no doubts that what happened to them is real. And if you don't believe them, the house is empty. Go check it out. Oh my goodness. <laughs> now the house is part of a haunted ghost tour within Hillsboro. So we went along on one of those tours. We'll have that story on our website, CBS17.com. Now, we did reach out to the current owners of the house, but they did not get back with us. They're probably upset with us. <laughs> now I feel kind of bad. But, you know, that's the history of the house. Well,